up on this episode of Game. Fraggy trips the wire on the front lines of Stalingrad in one of history's most brutal battles. We search the vaults of the internet to bring you our weekly pick of free-to-play gems. And it's getting close to the holidays, which can only mean one thing. The gaming blockbusters are here. All that and so much more. This is Game. Fellas, welcome to Game, your one-stop video game shop. The only place where you'll get to order your cake and eat it. Kelly's the name, Digital Delights are the game, and this week we're kicking the levels of destruction up a notch. First up, it's FPS action from the ages of the red shirts from Mother Russia. Taking us back to the old Soviet Union under communist rule, we sent our game commander, the Fragate, to witness and report from the front line in this week's review of Red Orchestra 2, Heroes of Stalingrad. Good evening, mine gamers, and welcome to Zeit, another hard-hitting board game review. This time, the Fragate is taking you back to the Eastern Front with Red Orchestra 2, Heroes of Stalingrad. Now, if you're not clued into the series of period wartime shooters, the Red Orchestra games are at their heart. Multiplayer-focused first-person shooters with a specialty for depicting the squabbles between two of the Second World War's main forces, Soviets and the Germans. But even if you are a little sick of World War II, what sets Red Orchestra apart from the bulk of other wartime shooters is its focus on realism. Now, if you're the kind of gamer who's grown up playing mainly console military first-person shooters, what this means is that bullets, well, they actually hurt now. And unlike many of today's games in which you can go out all lone wolf and all, Get in, Zero. Red Orchestra's pull is that it's all about careful planning and teamwork. But with so many other standout war games taking up shelf space, does Red Orchestra 2 have enough tactical pull to keep the serious shooter fan happy? Well, my gamers, sit back, because remember, in Soviet Russia, you don't play game, game plays you. Now, the biggest strength, like what I said before, is really how realistic Red Orchestra 2 feels when it comes to portraying what historians describe as history's bloodiest battle. Life is precious, and no game makes it more apparent than this. Step away from cover, and a few seconds is all it takes to meet the crosshairs of an enemy sniper. The game supports up to 64 players on a server, and when there are that many people all with guns aimed at each other, Red Orchestra 2 really comes close to the intensity of actually being on the battlefield. This realism carries over into almost every single aspect of the game, from the way the stages look, to the fact that bullets will drop over long distances. Even down to the details applied to the gun models and vehicle interiors. Now backing up all this graphical goodness, another feature which really makes Red Orchestra 2 stand out is its audio, which I can definitely say is amongst some of the best for the genre. 
Now, with a little bit of searching, I found out that it's by the same guy who brought us the stunning soundtrack in Mass Effect. But what I really liked about it was how it almost worked to punctuate what was happening on screen. Sound-wise, things are pretty solid as well. Now, bullets whiz past your head with alarming frequency, and I've never been into the middle of a dugout shelter as a battle was going on, but I bet that it must have sounded a little like this. Now, the main problem with this game is the same issue I have with a ton of games I review. Polish. Because as good as it is, Red Orchestra 2 still needs some serious time in testing. The copy I'm reviewing has already gone through two patches, but still in its current state, RO2 has more than a couple of game-breaking bugs which will sadly prevent most gamers from fully enjoying it. Besides frequent crashes to the desktop, the game also comes with a slew of technical problems, like servers not showing up, the sound cutting out, or just general wonkiness in the controls. Also, when this game was first announced, fans were excited because for the first time, this formerly multiplayer-only series would be getting a campaign mode. Hooray! Well, not really, because not only is the single-player mode just the same as the multiplayer game only with bots, you know, like in Quake 3, but the bots themselves? Well, they're some of the dumbest I've ever seen. I mean, seriously, don't even bother playing this unless you're online. You know, in the end, whether or not you enjoy this one really depends on two things. One, how much you're into World War II shooters, and two, how hard the guys at Tripwire work to fix the problems in Red Orchestra 2. I mean, it's almost a shame because there are just so many things to like about this game that I really wish they took a few more months to polish this baby to a shine. Sure, in a couple of months, this may be a totally different experience. And judging from their other games, Tripwire does have a good record of providing continual updates. But you see, gamers have short attention spans, and I can only hope that the community comes back when this game gets some much-needed first aid. Vidania, comrade, risking his life yet again to bring you to the brink of destruction and demolition, blood and battle. Well, I'll take that as my cue to dive into the trenches whilst we flashbang you with some subliminal messaging, also known as commercials. But don't worry, we'll regroup in a moment, but stick around, because in just two minutes... We pull in our nets for our weekly catch of online goodies... And check in with some of the best demos, a sampling of some heavy hitters coming to you, only here on Game. Welcome back to Game. You have joined us just in time, because in a minute we're about to dive headfirst into everybody's favorite segment. Now, each week, we bring you the best that the internet has to offer. And when I say best, I mean the best and free. That's right. For those of you who can't bear to part with your moolah, just remember, you don't have to. Who's looking out for you? Me, that too. All right, enough dilly-dallying about. It's time to go online. And this week's online opera, we dive into deep space with a colorful memory game. Perfect for those with an eye for detail. Headspin Space Race is a wonderful little flash gem which uses cutouts of old 1950s space comics for some page cloning fun. Presented like the surface of an open book, your job is to flip and arrange the stuff on the right page so that it mirrors what's on the left. Essentially a game of spot the difference this one also comes with a pretty cool story as you flip and turn the pages to find out what comes next. So if you've got a knack for imitation 
and maybe just coincidentally want to explore the unknowns of outer space, Headspin Space Race can be played by following the link below. Next in line, time to take to the skies with our very own airships in a free-to-play turn-based game which is getting quite some attention. Iron Grip Marauders is a browser-based game which offers players the chance to play against thousands or take on the AI all in real time. A game all about plotting and plundering, amass your army and raid the deserted domains of the internet. Thrown in the boots of a marauder captain, gather resources and build your army before charging down on a path of rampage. Feeling lost? Well, don't be, because this game also comes with a handy tutorial mode to help some of the newer players get a foothold. Missions are plentiful and help you gain experience points, which you can use to level up or recruit even more minions to join your cause. So, if you're harboring a poor short for plunder, get rid of your forces, because the Iron Grip Marauders are go at the address below. And finally, to end our online escapade, time to check in with a brand new action real-time strategy game with a distinctively old-school flavor. In Rise of Immortals, fans of RTS games will